Ron Fudge's happy holidays to you. I hope you're doing well. Oh, thank you for so, for listening to the podcast, for watching on YouTube, if you do it that way. If you like to look at me, you little creep, you little voyeur, you. We appreciate it. If you could rate, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe to us, give us five stars on iTunes, wherever you can support the podcast. It means a lot to me, and I would truly appreciate it. The other ways you can support the podcast is getting getting better t-shirt, ronpunches.com. Go to my merch section or to prowrestlingtees.com and look in the Ron Funches store. It's a beautiful shirt. Why not get one? Um, another way you can support the podcast, just email us. Give us some praise. Tell us, ask us questions. We'll, we'll respond back to you eventually. Uh, <laughs> getting better pod at gmail.com. The Twitter is getting better pod. Then the Instagram is getting better pod podcast and you can go there and find out about new guests we keep the affirmations there just a great way to keep track of the getting better universe like the wwe universe but less body slamming and steroids You can also support us directly through Patreon. It's patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. Leave yourself, uh, leave a donation for us. We truly appreciate it. Everything goes to help the podcast through um, new cameras, new mics, things like that, as well as paying Halston. And then, you know, Halston likes to get paid. So we appreciate it. It's getting better. Excuse me. It is patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. Um, starting at $2. You can get thank you shout outs on the podcast, personal affirmations. You can get a lot of a lot of great things. We're going to add more to it. Patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. One of the best ways to support the podcast. Besides coming and seeing me do stand up. And we are all done for 2019. I am not going to get on stage again. Uh, I'm taking a for the quickest time ever. I usually am up. Till like the 29th, the 30th, maybe even the 31st. So I'm like very happy. But if you want to come see me in 2020, please do that. The best way you can do that, first way you can do that is in Vancouver, Canada, February 21st, 22nd. I'll be part of the Just for Last Festival over there. Uh, February 27th, I will be in Brea, California, the Brea Improv. Uh, March 5th through 7th, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Helium Comedy Club. I will be in. Honolulu, Hawaii, March 14th. Uh, don't know the venue yet, but I will get you that information. March 19th to the 21st, I'm at Magoobies in Maryland. And in St. Louis, April 16th through the 18th at the Funny Bone. And then Salt Lake City, Utah, April 24th, 25th. So if you live in those areas, I'll be coming. If you if there's a town that you want me to come to and you never see me there, send an email to the podcast. If you can guarantee you can get 20, 40 people there. I'll try to add it to my 2020 schedule. Uh, so if you like, if I get a lot of emails saying, hey, come see me here in Wichita, come see me here in um, Delaware, whatever, wherever you want me. If I see multiple emails of people telling me to go someplace, I will reach out to my management so we can book a show in that area. So uh, just support the podcast. I hope you guys have a great end of the year. I hope you guys are doing well. Let's get the podcast started. Hit that music. Hi guys, we're back. Oh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, we just, just let's get right into it. Let's get the shout outs done right away. Again, patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. One of the best ways you can support the podcast. And if you do support the podcast at the five dollar level, give you a shout out right here. Ten dollars gets you your own personal affirmation video. We got those coming out for the holidays. If you're hearing this, it's already too late to get one for Christmas, but uh, you can get one starting next year. You know, get your New Year's re- resolution started off right. Just like Stacy P killing it. We love you. Thank you for your help. David in Oregon, we love you. Appreciate you so much. You know I'm from there. You know I love you guys there. And Selena in Canada. You are a beautiful wonderful amazing person 2020 is your year and you are going to kill it i guarantee so let's get at it those are the people we got to shout out this week you could get on that list again patreon.com slash getting better with ron now let's get into our affirmations i think you know what they are said i hope you're feeling strong hope you're feeling brave 
Hope you're feeling confident. Hope you're feeling loved. Hope you're feeling grateful for that love. Hope you're feeling open and willing to try new things. Hope you're excited for the new year and all the opportunities that it'll bring. I hope if you, ooh, that rhymed. <laughs> I hope if you're feeling bad, if you don't feel fulfilled about what this year brought to you, that you're ready to reset, you're ready to start again, and you're ready to brush that aside. As we said before, we carve our successes in stone and our failures in sand, and we're just going to keep moving, becoming better, and and becoming the people that we want to be. That's what 2020 is going to be all about. Hope you're excited for your vision board party. I know some people have been reaching out, talking about they want advice on, on how to make a vision board, and, and we're going to do that. We're going to have a vision board episode. It's going to come out on the 20, um, I don't know, when, when's the 28th, Austin? So it's going to come out the 30th. Perfect. So it'll be the day before New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is a great way to, if you want to have a healthy, happy, um, productive New Year's Eve party, I think a vision board party is the best way to do that. Um, and we'll be going over how, how we make our vision boards and what we do for the party. I'll give you a little bit now just in case you want to plan a party and you're like, hey, don't wait till the 30th to tell me about a party you're doing on the 31st. Um, but so, you know, we just get our friends together. We try to have some healthy-ish food, some things that so we won't be like feeling sick by the end of the party. We still get faded. We get stoned. If people want to drink, they can get drunk. But we get a bunch of magazines, a bunch of art, a bunch of collages to put together. And then we sit together. We do some games. We're going we're gonna to get the rock band out. We're going to get the Wii Bowling out. Um, and we're just going to play some good, uplifting music. And we're going to have a wonderful dinner together. Together, and then we're going to sit down at the table, get our glue sticks out, get our crafts, our scissors out. And then we're going to make our vision boards, which is usually just like pictures of things that you want. Feel free to just like have it be material items. That's fine. But the more specific thing that you want, the better. So if you want a new car, don't just put a new car. Put the exact model of that car that you want. Put exactly what you want. Put this very specific. That's the deal with vision boards and um, believe in yourself. For me, I like to do a list, a straight up list, because um, sometimes collages are a little bit too abstract for me. I like to I like to be very practical and just be like one, two, three, four, five. These are the things I'm trying to accomplish. Um, but whatever works for you, maybe maybe that's daunting to you and you'd rather see it in the collage. But again, as long as you're specific about it, as long as you're open about it. And then I think one of the best part about vision board parties is the ability to say it out loud in front of a group about what you want. Because sometimes that's that will really make you shy away. That will really make you be like, oh, okay, I got to think about this. But when you stand there and you look people in the eyes and you go, I want this. There's a power to that. And there is um, just a, an activity, being active, moving forward and getting better. And that's what this podcast is about. And I hope you guys are into it. I hope you're loving it. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I want to do, um, what I've been focusing on. I looked at my vision board for, for the last year, and I'm really excited that um, most of the things got crossed off. Most of, we'll get into details on the during the vision board party episode, but most of them got taken care of. Even the ones that didn't are still alive in some way. There are a, a couple of disappointments. Again, um, just I didn't reach weight, weight goals, but it's a lot less about that weight goal and more about um, me still being stuck in this mindset of like. It's about a certain way and in, in the way I treat myself and the way I um, punish myself for for overeating or the way that I overeat when I'm stressed out. And I just want to get a better relationship with food next year and be more mindful and, and be open with myself and with the fact that I have issues and I have addictions with, with food and, and the ways that I... Um, use it to reward myself or use it to get over pain and the way and I've done that since I was a child and I just got to be open about that and fix what's going on in my brain and in my heart instead of just being like we can we can lift our way out of this we can jog our way out of this is in like we know we can't out train our diet you know you you have to be consistent and happy and know that it is a lifestyle it's not just a sprint it's a marathon it's the way that we're going to live because I want to try to be a funny actor when I'm 60, 70 years old. I'm watching old episodes of Seinfeld and and stuff. And I'm just like, man, 
that would be really fun to just be a 60 year old actor doing funny stuff when you're old and people don't expect it. And I'm assuming that the pool of actors is smaller because people are dying. So that'd probably be easier for me to get work. So in order to do that, I got to stay healthy. I got to stay active. And so this is just going to be my life. And I want to be committed to that. And I just want to bloom and shine this next year. And I'm so happy for you guys. And part of the blooming and shining is being open with who I am and talking about this type of shit because we put it out we did like the dan soder episode and i looked through some of the comments and a lot of them were just his fans being like oh this is like this is preachy and corny and this isn't even funny and I'm like well this isn't for you you know this isn't for you and you leaving a comment isn't gonna make me change it i have people telling me oh, i shouldn't even do the intros i should just do the the guests and then do the int do do the outro so if people want to stick around and hear me they can do that then but fuck you this is my podcast we talk about what i want to talk about i don't bring guests here because they're famous i don't bring guests here because they're popular i bring them here because they're my friends and i want to learn things from them or have things that i want to talk to them about and so you're you going to either sit to my intro or you're going to fast forward it. Either way, I don't care, but I'm not changing it because I'm not doing this for other people. I'm doing this for me because I like talking about this type of stuff because I like going to shows and hearing people tell me that they're going to therapy or they're, they're um, looking at the way that they're raising their kids and wanting them to raise their kids with, with, with more um vision boarding and plan making and setting and goal setting and that to me is much more of a positive impact that i can leave on this world than any joke i could ever make so if this isn't funny to you this isn't anything you want to listen to that's fine don't listen but i'm not gonna change this is what it is getting better is what it is because this is what makes me happy and i hope in 2020 you focus on what makes you happy and what makes you feel fulfilled and not what people want from you and not what people expect from you or um try to put you in a box to do but what makes you truly happy what truly makes your heart sing and, and move towards that and have fun with it and i hope it brings you a lot of money and i hope you're happy with that i hope you want success i know sometimes people be like oh what does money got to do with it money is a, a part of abundance i like abundance i like options i like traveling and so i want more money and if that makes me sound like an asshole to you then you probably not in this mindset that i'm in I want more money so I can provide for my son more, so I can set his trust up more, so that we can, me and, and Robot, that she never has to worry about stuff. In that case, we want to have a kid that that kid is taken care of. And I'll put that all on me. I like it. I like being a leader. I like going out and getting it. That's what's fun for me. That's going to a club, going to like doing that type of shit. That's not fun for me. Work is fun for me. Work and doing nothing at all. Those are my two favorite things. <laughs> and I wish that for you. I wish that for you in 2020. I hope you're having a um, good time getting through the holidays. I hope um, nobody's putting too much pressure on you financially or mentally. or uh, um, And that if it is, just know we're going to get through it, you know? Just that type of season. The year's around the corner. Don't let nobody make you feel bad. You never know what a year will bring and your change will make. My life used to be so much different. And then just a couple different couple years of good luck and things are are doing so much better. It looked like Kamel and then Johnny. If you know Kamel, you look at old pictures of his body and then look what a year difference can make. You know, and also, you know, multiple trainers and a lot of stuff. But you know, we not here. To talk shit, we hear, man, that motherfucking picture inspired the shit out of me. I loved it. I loved it. I texted him right away and was like, man, you looking good. I've been slacking. New Year holidays got me back eating snack cakes and cookies and ordering fat sales and then throwing the sandwich away after I take a bite because I realized how far into the, the into the uh, just bleak bleakness and dire situation I was getting into. I was sliding hard threw that sandwich away next day saw that pickle kumail and i was like i am got to get back on it i know i mean hey I, I might not be ever in some marvel movie or action thing but i want to prepare i want to get ready so that if i am it's gonna be an easier transition because that's fun man kumail you're looking beautiful man you're inspiring people looking good and i love how you put it that it's not a reasonable 
body type for people to get that it took other people work and you're very honest and upfront. I appreciate that. One day we get you on the podcast. Either way, we're just happy that you're shining, man, because you're shining the light for the rest of us to follow. Love Kamel Nanjiani. I hope you guys do too. I hope you like this podcast. Our guest today is amazing, wonderful person who also is just uh, shining and blooming and wonderful in her own skin. Truly unique. One of my favorite people, one of the funniest people working today, whether it is uh, improv, acting, whatever whatever you see her in she kills it she is amazing she is wonderful she is the talented betsy sedera did you go to the bar thing i did not i ended up not yeah i went skiing that day and then just kind of timed my whole day wrong where i was like oh i'm still on the road i will not be getting back i was bummed but i loved your text (laughs) like yeah, yeah. I got real high in the day, and then took my son to do stuff, and then yeah. fell asleep. Hey, play Guitar Hero, and then I took a nap. Good. Yeah, that's a good day. It was a great day. That's a perfect day. I wasn't day. complaining. Yeah, no. I loved it. Oh, that's great. Guitar yeah. Hero. Mm-hmm. I'm like old, like the yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah, I'm getting back into it. Yeah, I'm starting to think. I'm thinking about buying Rock Band, but now like. If you want to get a new, like, you know, if you new guitar, new bass, yeah. new drum set, yeah. if you want the full kit, it's like nine hundred dollars. And where on like eBay? Yeah. Oh my god, isn't that wild? Because we all had it. Yeah. And they were like, "This is lame." And we all <gasps> tossed them. We all tossed them. And now they're all like crazy collectibles. If especially if you want a new one, I mean, <sighs> if you, I feel like used ones, you don't want to mess with used ones because you know they gunked yeah. up, people drummed them yeah. to death. You gotta oh, yeah. go new. Oh yeah. So I feel if anything, it's like that's like a strong. I'm gonna put it on my w- registry for my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Please do that. <laughs> you got it. That's perfect. No, I already told her. I was like, can I put? Because she doesn't really have any interest okay. in that. She she just. I was like, do you want me to handle the red? I go, I'll God, do I hope registry. you get like 50 of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, rock band, let's go. I love that. So I just put in, I want to put old wrestling action figures. They're way too expensive. And um, and then rock band. Perfect. And then like a bread maker. So people be like, oh, this is, he's okay, serious. He's, 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 <laughs> this is real. That bread maker. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's, that's the thing. That lets you know this is, he's not messing around. He wants all these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's ready. He's he's getting married. He's ready now. Yeah. That's why I need the rock band exactly. to have a family. Yeah. Exactly. Four players. I feel I just realized recently that, um, this is going to sound bad. Within the last like five years that you give gifts if you go to a wedding. I thought if you went, it was kind of game on. It was like, cool, you're here. You don't need to give a gift. No, you're supposed to give you're a gift. Most to... people know that. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that. It seems like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me that you did. I feel so dumb. (laughs) I feel so dumb. And it was like in the middle of like a good friend's wedding where I was like, I ain't getting a lot of of like two where I knew both of them. Yeah. Where I was like, they're both good friends of mine. And then I was like, wait, everybody else got them presents and you're here? Oh, fuck. Okay. (laughs) I got to start getting I It's bad. I feel so bad. And then I was like, can I retroactively go back and get people presents? Oh, yeah. They love it. People just love presents. Right? I don't think there's any time limit on it. And that's why I was telling her. She was like, oh, she's like, we don't need stuff. And I was like, yeah, I know. But we know a lot of people. And more now, we know more people who have a little bit of money. Yes. Who would rather send a gift than go. True. True. And I say, why not take advantage of that? Take advantage. Where's it going to be? Probably here. Okay. Yeah. Because a destination wedding, what are your thoughts on gifts for a destination wedding? The only way to do it. If you do a destination wedding, that's just you saying you don't want me at your wedding. Like, why why, why would I have to travel? It's one thing to travel where you live yeah. to go do it, but we're yeah. all traveling. I hate destination weddings. I hate destination birthdays more than that. Whoa. I, I don't think I've it. ever done that. 
I guess now that I say that, I'm doing that this upcoming birthday. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? But it's also I hate them unless it's me. It's also, our worsen. wedding it's will be in worsen. Russia. <laughs> so you better all come. <laughs> Where is it going to be? Uh, my birthday thing? Yeah. Um, well, I... Someone reached out to do a gig in Honolulu <gasps> around that time. And so I was like, oh, that's my, I'll just go. My birthday's that Thursday. The show's that Saturday. Perfect. I'll just leave on Wednesday Perfect. and just spend that weekend there. And, and, and I'll bring my my features and my my opener and we'll have a weekend. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. It's not like you're then inviting 20 people. No. And getting mad if they're like, hey, I can't afford to go to Honolulu. No. Oh, no. that's perfect. Yeah, I hate it when people do that. Yeah. Because I've had friends, I, my, uh, I had a friend of mine who went on a destination birthday thing, and then a couple of days before, the birthday person was like, I can't afford to go anymore. <sighs> and they had already got their tickets and all that what? type of stuff. What? What are they thinking? It's a bad friend. That's a bad friend. It's a bad friend. It's a selfish friend. A, oh. To just set a destination birthday is a selfish act to say, hey, you love me so much. You're going to take the few bits of vacation time that you do yep. have. Yep. To come For on. me. Yeah. Oh, and then I'm going to bail. Yeah. Whoa. I know. That messed me up, man. <laughs> that messed me up. That would really, really test my pay. Yeah, that would really test me on like, can I be friends with this person? I don't think I could. I don't think I could either. <laughs> I don't think I could. And you know what I would do? I would go to wherever that destination party was and lose my mind and rub it into their face. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to go about it. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good mindset. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. How's your life? It's pretty good. It's been really fun. Good. Yeah. It seems like it from afar. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah it's been very fun. Um, I don't. It's been a really fun. This. I just keep saying fun, but a really fun year. Hmm. 2019 has been like a lot of cool trips. And then uh, cool projects, too, mm -hmm. which is so nice. Like, I got to go to Greece in the summer, which was the best place. Have you been? No, never. I highly recommend it. Give a honeymoon uh -huh. fun to your registry, <laughs> man. <laughs> Go I'm Greek. interested. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it's having a big and fat like, Greek wedding. They have a big fat Greek wedding. Yeah, in Greece. Why not? There you go. I'll plan it for you. <laughs> and I'm very bad at weddings, as you can tell. I, think I... We got a good movie. <laughs> this is already a great. There movie. we go. We got a movie. Um, yeah, went to Greece. It was my second time. It's the most fun place, and like everybody's so. All all the the locals are so nice and just so proud and just like, hey, this is the best salad you're going to ever have in your life. And you're like, whoa, I think it is. And then like, I'm the best cab driver you're ever going to meet in your life as they're just like kind of swerving around. You're like, you are good, sir. It's <laughs> awesome. It's so much fun. I like that. I like that culturally. That, that makes me think about something we talk about on the podcast a little bit, like customer service wise. We don't really see that here in America. No. Not much pride in customer service. I feel especially in L.A. Um, Cause I do feel like when I go home to Colorado or whatever, it's it's there's a little bit more where it's like, oh, the wait staff is very nice and and like people are smiling more. Um, whereas in LA, it's just kind of like, where are they? Yeah, where what's what's going on? And just kind of that attitude of like, this isn't really what I do, which is fine. But is it? <sighs> I think it's. I, I've thought about that before because I've had that attitude before yeah. uh, whenever I was doing things. I mean, sometimes I'll have it. What what sucks is when I find myself having it on sets or things like that where I'm like, oh, oh. OK, you think you think I'm number 13 on the call sheet, but I'm really number. There's a one in that. And I, that's it. Get rid of that three, man. <laughs> and isn't that why? Like, I'll find myself sometimes losing patience or whatever. I'm like, fancy. 
this is like your dream. Chill out. And I'm able to. But yeah, I feel, I guess it's, yeah, because I, when I first moved here, worked at awful jobs that had to do with um, customer service. But I still, and I was like, I hate this. I don't want to go. But I still would then be like, okay, well, I'm here. I'm going to be nice to people because that's what I would want if Mm -hmm. I were these families coming to this Disney soda shop shit. (laughs) Oh, it was a nightmare. (laughs) The one by El Capitan. I had to work there. I had to wear a dumb fucking outfit. And I had to be like a soda jerk. It sucked so bad. I mean, if it was the 50s, that'd be the number one job you want. If it was the 50s, it'd be rad. Yeah. It was 2008. (laughs) And it sucked so bad. Ooh, it was there, and then I had to work at the backdraft attraction at Universal Studios. I mean, both of these things sound great when you say them to me. You would think. <laughs> it wasn't that great. It wasn't that great. But it's all right. Yeah, I've always, it's a, I think this is a struggle that a lot of people have and a lot of people lose to just be like, it's okay to be where you are in that moment and, yeah. and, and just being happy there a lot of times will help you oh. move up, will help you yeah. move to that next level because it's not until you kind of like, it's like quicksand. You like, yeah. you stop struggling and you just be like, okay, I'm here. I'm happy. What's, what's the best that I can yeah, do? Yeah, for now, like I can't leave here for another eight hours. So I might as well have a good time, as much of a good time as I can. Yeah. 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 That's the attitude that, uh, um, a shift that I had to put in a lot of my life as far as even like auditions or things like that, where I'm just like, let me just show what I can do. Yeah. It takes a while to figure that out too. You know, I wish somebody had been like, Hey, just you do your thing and it'll be okay. Rather than being like, well, I got to do a funny voice. (laughs) I got to change all my movement or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of it's like trying to start fit into what you think they want. Yeah. Instead of being like, this is what I am. And if this works for you, great. If yeah. it doesn't, fine. That's fine. Um, but this is what I do best. Yeah. Why would I show you a lesser version of that? Yeah, where it- I even feel weird about doing it. It's like, why would I do that? Yeah. 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 There have been a few times where like I've gone in and it's like, me and a bunch of like six year old women <laughs> or me and a bunch of dudes. And at first kind of being like weirded out by that. But then it's like, oh, but maybe I do have what they want for this part. Who cares if I'm not in the what's the th- the description of the character correctly? Maybe I can. Maybe they'll see me and be like, that's that's our crazy cat lady we need. <laughs> <laughs> and it works it works um let me tell you but usually i tell people why i asked them to be on the podcast it's okay just that um why i want you here is that um I'm a fan of your work and oh, first of all i I'm just such a fan of you oh thank you such a fan thank you so much yeah. i just think you're very you're just so funny and so um and i, I don't like saying this because i know um, it can be conceived as an insult to us, but like effortlessly funny, which I know it's effort. I know there's deep effort in no, training. Isn't. Well, okay. But there's technique. Never in- have I worked hard. <laughs> 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 but no, it's, so there's such a natural, um, deep well of talent in you that you obviously oh, thank you. work on and crafting. But it's no matter what you did, there's like, oh, this is a special person. Oh. And then. Just working with you on, um, we worked together on um, the arm wrestling movie, Golden Arm. Yeah. Coming out sometime. Sometime. <laughs> or maybe never. No. Who knows? <laughs> It'll come out. It might. What a blast. At least, at least some people will see it. <laughs> yeah, some people will see it. Hopefully we will. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it was just, so, it was so oh. much fun working with you. and So just, much fun. Um, Seeing that you were just the same you know, off stage and off camera as on and you were so given and just in 
um, it just never, I mean, I hadn't really worked on a project like that in a long time where I really enjoyed everyone and, and, and seeing where everybody was going out to dinners afterwards and yeah. going out and, and just hanging out when you don't have to, which yeah. is usually not my case. I'm just like, okay, I'll be in my trailer. Yep. Trying not to get high or maybe get <laughs> yeah. high. Or maybe get a little high. <laughs> yeah, it was so much. It, it felt like I never went to like a sleepaway summer camp, but I'm like, this feels kind of like what I think it is. You know, it was so fun where it was just like, as soon as we were wrapped for the day, still just be like, what do you guys want to do now? Like, let's go hang out some more, even though we just did all day. I had such a blast. And then we got to do some fun, some fun stuff. <laughs> we got to get a little nasty. We did just get a little, little nasty bit nasty. Together. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so much fun. It was so fun. And a weird motel. In Oklahoma. <laughs> it's a weird, creepy one. It was. I really liked it there, though. I yeah. like that city so it much. It was so cool. Shout out to Nick's Grill. Best hamburger I've ever had. I never was able to get it. But I want to... I'm going to go back and get I'm, it. Yeah, that's what I've been talking about. I'm willing. If you guys got a venue, a place where you want to come see me do stand-up that's near the area of a Nick's Grill... <laughs> Please reach out to me. <laughs> um, how often do you think about that burger? I think about it. There's two things I think about. Two yeah. food. <laughs> I'm excited. The, um, there's the butter cake at, at Mastro's, which is, have wow. you ever had that? I have not. Have you ever been to that place? Uh-uh. Okay, it's just a fancy steakhouse. Great, I mean. basketball. But we saw, when we went there, Ron Artest was there. Oh, God. And so that was fun. Okay. And um, But we were just, it was, it was my fiance's birthday. And so we were like, let's go splurge. Let's have a little fun. Good. And we saw this butter cake. It's best, it is the most cinnamony and uh, like, <sighs> It's just hard to describe. Okay. It's a lot of things in one. Yeah. It, it's like it's Ooh, crispy. Mommy. But then you dig in and it's just so, Ooh. it gives way. It's just good. a beautiful dessert. Yeah, this sounds good. And so I think about that and I think about that burger. <sighs> and those are like things where I'm just like, oh yeah, that's yeah. like, I can, I can go back in time. <sighs> it's a beautiful. Food is wonderful. It is amazing. Food. It's incredible. And yeah, I have a, a complicated a relationship with it. Yeah. <laughs> me, me too, man. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. It, it's tough. It's tough. It, it, it's tough, but I love it, but it's tough. <laughs> Oh, but the main we talked about your your um career a little bit, but the main reason why I wanted you on the podcast is that um when I see you on Instagram or when I see, see you in person or when I see you on the screen, you just you you portray this like comfort and this like oh. this um just relaxation of being in your own skin and, and being oh. confident with yourself. I don't know if that's something that maybe I'm wrong in. I don't I hope I'm not. No, but, I, no. But it's something I think that's very um attractive as a performer and as a per person, as a friend. And I just wanted to ask you a little bit about where that comes from or Oh, that's so nice. And and yeah, I was it pretty like even as a kid I was like, "Oh, I'm very different from other people on just a bunch of different levels." And um and I used humor constantly as a like, "Huh? You want to be friends and let's have fun." And it just has kind of always been where I'm very I've always, and always not, but for the most part, I've always been just really happy with who I am and where I am in my life. Like, I think except for maybe middle school, <laughs> where everybody was like, where I was like, I got to become cool and mean to people, and then it sucked. Um, but I just, and my my family has always been really just like, yeah, be your, like, go ahead, be yourself. Like, I, they would let me kind of pick out my outfits and I dressed like a lunatic and I loved every second of it. You know, they let me kind of do not whatever I wanted, but they were just like, you're you're a good kid. Keep and you're making friends like people like like keep doing what you're doing. There's nothing. I don't know. Is that a good answer? Is that a great answer? I think okay. that's very important. Something as a parent. Um, 
that I think maybe sometimes I even forget about is less that I think you're so active about making sure things don't happen or something yeah. that you're so much of a like guardian that yeah. you forget to be going like, hey, you're doing great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're a good kid. You can, and I try to do with my son as well. I have a mantra with him that whenever I'm, whenever he's usually awakened in school before I wake up, but whenever, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whenever yeah, yeah. we're on the same schedule, I try to wake him up and just like, Hey, you know, you're kind, you're smart. Oh. You're, you're wonderful. Just like you are. Yeah. And it's just, um, a thing that we try to do together that I then try to carry in myself. Yes. Yeah. Cause it is easy sometimes, easier sometimes to say it to somebody than to yourself. Um, and it, you gotta remind yourself all the time. And it's like, yeah, this is you're good. You're doing good. Uh, which I have growing up. I've always been just like, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. This is you're doing good. You're a nice person. Don't worry about, it. you know, and mm-hmm. like you like to have fun, have fun. If you have fun, other people will have fun. Uh, and that's kind of always how I've been. I'm just kind of like, let's just Let's just goof around and just be ourselves and not care. Mm. And it's so fun <laughs> to live that way. I've said fun so many times. Fun. It's probably going to be an name episode. Yeah, fun. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, And then um, comedy has just even put me more comfortable. Where it's like, yeah, be yourself on stage. Even though I improvise, like... I, of course, create characters, but those are all coming from in here. So it's just like, yeah, it's still kind of me or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just validating that part of you and pushing that forward. Yeah. I like that the thing that you said to me that kind of struck me right now is that you said, if you have fun, they'll have fun. And I think that's a way of giving that is perfect because you're at the same time you're you're filling your cup at the same time that you're you're helping other people yeah. and i think a lot of times we look at giving in a, in, a, in the opposite way that if i have to make sure other people are having fun before yeah. i can have fun yes yeah which and i've i've found myself in that situation a ton too and then it's like wait just slow just hey Focus on you. It's okay to focus on you. It's necessary to focus on you before other people. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and I will say RuPaul uh, has really said a lot of big things that have struck me as like, oh, shit. Like, even just this ends every episode of Drag Race, but like, um, uh-oh, now I'm going to eat shit and all the drag fa- fans are going to be mad. But pretty much like, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? And it that that's so huge to me. And just like a lot of times the negative thoughts and stuff are just, they're all coming from within your, uh, yourself a lot of the most, pretty much most of the time where these thoughts are happening. And you're like, oh no, that's what people are thinking of me. It's like, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. It, um, A part of me that really helps get over that is going like oh you egotistical piece of shit you think people are thinking about that's, you yeah ex- that's how i think too it's like what they're thinking about themselves like no yeah and how dare you think that way where it's just like oh yeah i'm not the center of the universe i, I just ch- like care about i just gotta chill mm-hmm. i learned that when i used to, when i just started peeing outside a bunch <laughs> <laughs> Good. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. Nobody cared. Everybody was doing their own thing. I hope that becomes like a therapy method of like, now I just need you to start peeing outside a bunch. And you'll realize everybody's just focusing on themselves. <laughs> just pee by, you don't, pee now you might not want to take a shit. You might, might. <laughs> that, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe see if you need to take a shit. If you're <laughs> dealing too much. Where's the wildest place you've peed outside? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's, none of it's very wild. Very, okay, no but I tell much. you in general, um, I usually go get my nails done every Saturday. Not every Saturday, but a couple, like twice a month usually yeah. on a Saturday. And then 
like clockwork, usually by the time I leave out of the place, I really have to pee before my Uber comes. And yeah. then I just pee down this block every every week, every Saturday, pretty much. <laughs> you would think I would remember to go to the bathroom one of the week. There's never. a bathroom in that establishment. Never. But I never do. Never. And then I... I just end up having to pee on the street. I love that. Mm-hmm. Good for, hey, good for you. Thank you. Pee wherever you want. Yeah, I mean, not wherever. <laughs> pee wherever you want. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Betsy said so. Huh? <laughs> Who? You're arrested. Can you get arrested for peeing in public? Yeah. Probably, right? Yeah, for sure. Public okay. urination, I think. You oh, can. yeah. Yeah. I think okay. there's a whole Seinfeld episode about it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, oh. I was reading about you and it said, and it really made sense once I read it, but I didn't know it at that time. But um, that Chris Farley is one of your biggest influences. Yeah, I love him so much. I love him too. He just and I, I, I think like the joy it seems he always is having whenever he's on screen or whatever. I think that captured me of just like whoa. He seems like he's having the most fun all the time in front of the camera. And 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 he's just so funny. Oh, I love him so much. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, he's a big influence. Sweet soul. I think you could really see his heart and everything yeah. that he was doing. Yep. And it was all, yeah, just full energy, full commitment to... Um, like he was like, I'm going to reach into you and pull a laugh out of you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I just, I remember, like, I feel, when was it? I just remember seeing him for the first time on Saturday Night Live and just being like, what? I want to do that. I want to do that. Whatever he's doing, I want to try to do that. And I think I can because I make people laugh. How do I do that? You know, like I was just immediately enamored with him. Because even if he was the smallest little bit part, he was so good and funny. Mm -hmm. Like just in like Wayne's world as the security guard. It's just like that guy. We need more of that guy. And the bus driver and Billy Madison. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I want to do that. All the time. His nose bitten off by a Saigon whore. Let's go start a fight. I love it. Yeah. B7. <laughs> oh my God. I was, that's, is that dirty work? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I haven't seen that in a while. Doesn't hold up that much. I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's always that kind of like, okay, I'm going to put in this thing I really loved from the 90s. <sighs> What are they gonna do? Yeah, now Don Rickles, great, he's amazing. Oh my God, yeah, I forgot he's in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so many great people are in it. It's a great. It's a. It's yeah. worth watching. Okay, and and you know, while you also talk to people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like it's fun to have in the background. Um, I recently watched. Uh, Rewatch Billy Madison because that was mm-hmm. one where I was just like every party in high school would end with Billy Madison when everybody's like ready to go to sleep or whatever. Like, put on Billy Madison. We'll all say all the lines together. And I watched it recently and it does hold up. Yeah. And there aren't um there aren't any moments where it's like, Yeah. You can't do that. Um and this is the thing I just thought of. You yeah. can totally agree or disagree. I do not have concrete evidence of okay. any type, but let's Uh-oh. talk about it. Yeah. I think it's because silly ages better than snarky. Big time. Big time. A- absolutely. Which I, I f- feel is the kind of comedy I like more is just that like, oh, yeah, let's just be silly. We don't have to constantly... Um, be calling social things out, mm-hmm. political things out. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's just get hammered and see a penguin and chase that penguin. Like, yes, yeah. that's all I want. I agree with you. <laughs> it's um, and 
I think there's obviously there's room for both, and there's people yeah. who are great at at one or the other. Usually, no one great at both. That would be super weird. That's too scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. Too scary. No way. But um, I do find that sometimes, especially in the stand up community, there seems to be this thing of like, if you're not speaking truth to power, what what are you even going up there for? And it's yeah. just like, and sometimes it makes me. Um, like when I went to New York just this last couple of weeks, it seemed like everybody set was super woke, super yeah. into like, you know, gender politics or just politics. Or yep. Like that. And some of it was good, but a lot of it was the same thing that I was hearing over and over. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, shit, I don't know how this koala material is going to go. <laughs> And it went well. Of course it did. <laughs> it's such a, it's a nice, because it is right now um, <clears throat> with everything that's going on in the world and in our country and stuff, there is a part of me where it's like, oh, I want to like stick it to the man. But I also don't think I'm smart enough to in a fun way. Um, so then I'm always like, well, hey, we need a break from it mm-hmm. too. Why can't we have more koala stuff? Yeah. Like, well, I feel like, um, I've always felt like if you're on the opposite side of the box, you're still in that box. Like, yeah. you're not, you're just because you're criticizing what's going on on the left side of the box just means you're holding up the fucking box. Like, I would much rather spend my time being like okay if i don't like that let me create what i do like yeah this is what i want and that's what my stand-up has been about recently it's just that i just go and come well, like hey you might not like this but this is what i'm enjoying yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is what i like which is so huge for audience audiences to see is just being like this is this makes me happy right now it's a it's a nice real relief for a lot of people i think i think so yeah i think it's important i think i think both are important both are huge but yeah i just think um much in the way that like nintendo games age better than some type of like shooter you yeah. know because yeah. graphics are always advanced there'll always be a new person to talk about i know i'm mixing a bunch of metaphors but no keep doing it i love it, I love it. <laughs> but that's stylish that classic that like mario that billy madison that chris farley those are the type of things i think don't age yeah because they're so specific and they're so silly and they're i think they come from this is what makes me laugh yep and so i want to share share it yeah and that's important i think that's what you do with your comedy and i think it's very valuable you do it do it it's just so nice (laughs) it's just i do think it's just so it's um people want that as much as they want like yeah fucking let's bring shitheads down there is also something like oh god that was just straight up fun and funny and great yeah um what's your favorite nintendo game of all time of all time super mario 3 Ooh. <laughs> Me too. I love it so yeah, much. It's an easy answer for me. I In think Oklahoma, it shows my I bought age. a Switch. Oh, you got a Switch? Mm-hmm. I got I got a lot of things. <laughs> good, 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 good. I got too many things. I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best game. Yeah, I love it. It's, um, You know, there's all the Marios are wonderful, but just for my age, for at that time, Super Mario 3, blew my mind me too it it really blew my i was like wait we could go backwards we could go run backwards on the thing great that it was on the same system i was like what do you mean like they don't this looks like cave drawings compared to this like yeah this is amazing i can be in a boot come on oh my god that boot (laughs) yeah love the boot love that boot just give me that tail (laughs) <laughs> tail and ears that's all i need i love it so much it's the best that's what i like you know see your instagram i always always show it to my fiance i was like i go like i go like we're like the same person <laughs> i put thinking it's just a nintendo uh half burnt bowl 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of my life is just like, should we play a video game? Yes, we should. Let's go. I love it, especially when you work hard for and you in other ways and you earn it. It yeah. feels like kind of having the cheat code at life where you're like all these things that people told me it was a waste of my time <sighs> or that I was like being childish it's like i still get to do all those things and make yes. money and pay my mortgage it's yeah. amazing it's really exciting and it is like with video games and stuff it's just like it helps my mind calm down a lot of the time it helps me just kind of like chill out shut off and just focus on something not constantly work or mm -hmm. whatever yeah and yeah. that's important. It's very important. It's so easy to fall into that. It's so easy. That's why I was I took this last week. I didn't do any work. I just stayed with my family <gasps> and we went and saw the Mr. Rogers movie. Oh. And we had Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I'm halfway through and I'm getting antsy. And I'm like, oh, I should be doing a set. I should be doing a thing. And then it really occurred to me. It's like, no, this is why mm -hmm. you were like in your mid-20s, yes. you were spent you were doing those Thanksgivings out in Arkansas, out in Alabama doing gigs yep. where nobody was showing up to because it was Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Because they were at home with their families and you're like, oh, yes, I've earned this moment now. Yeah. I talk, I, I like, um, I talk about it with my therapist a lot and he's very much like, take time off. He's like, have a, have a day where even if you're like, mm, there's stuff I could be doing, just don't do it. You need this stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like, whoa. And I've been trying to really make myself do it more. And it is awesome. Yeah, it's just because you need to recharge. Yeah. And that's why I notice it and I can see feel it in myself throughout the year where I'm like, I'm like, okay, we're doing fine, we're doing fine. And then usually about the summer, I'll get some project that mm -hmm. like when we were doing the movie, I had come off of taping something else and did that because I wanted to, yeah. and then got offered something else that was money. And so I was like, well, I got it. Yeah, yeah. And so then I was like, I would when I was waking up tired and yeah. I was like, oh, like you're not like sleep is not even not even if you get eight hours is not enough right yeah. now. You're worn out. Yeah. And I think it's um in this in in America and especially it's we get caught up in the will of being productive mm -hmm. so much that we forget about um quality of life. <gasps> and there's no point in being so productive that you don't get to enjoy the things that you produce doesn't yeah. make any sense. Uh uh. But we do it. But we do it. Because <laughs> I mean, it is like we love doing what we do, but it is that it's easy to wear yourself out. Yeah. And, and when you love what you do and it is a, a business, um, you learn that, like, um, when people know you love it, that's something that can be taken advantage of. Yeah. And to p learn to protect your value and protect your energy yeah. becomes utmost important as an artist because you could spend time being like, oh, I need to do every set and do all these things. And, but that won't necessarily up your value. No. No, because you're, you're starting to distribute essentially like oh well here's 25 percent of my energy towards this thing because i have three more things that makes 100 right yeah four <laughs> of those so yeah i have one thing of 25 percent, and then three more things that i'm like okay and then all of that equals 100 percent of my oomph where it's like oh, i should focus on the one thing and make it 100 percent worth me yeah and, and I think it is fun. Sorry, I just no, please. But like yours. <laughs> in in our twenties, that was kind of the fun part, where it's just like I want to do everything. I want to do three shows a night if I can. That's all I want to do. All I want to do. And then it does get to the point where it's like, nope, I want to just chill, do one thing, a hundred percent, yeah, and just full focus. Yeah, yeah. That's when I noticed that's been a. a, a a rule in a house is just that I don't, I would always overbook myself and then cancel. And we reached a point where um, my fiance talked to me because she was like, 
she's like hey like before i met you i would go to your shows and stuff like yeah. that and like and if you cancel like that bummed me out oh yeah she's like so like don't you she's like, you're not and it, it i guess it's kind of the opposite of the like who do i think i am but it's just like having more of like a so the theme of being like oh there are some people who do want to go see me yeah so if i make a commitment i have to keep it so i just should know hey don't make that commitment yeah just don't make it yeah and i've been getting a lot better at that but it's a fucking struggle because it's you tough. you just feel like we were conditioned to be like oh phone's not ringing nobody wants me anymore i'm I, i'm done they found somebody else yep you know yep because it is i've i've tried to get better at that too of just like <clears throat> where if somebody emails me about a show really thinking like will i want to do a show on a friday night at midnight think about it betsy will you want to and it's always like no i won't and I don't want to bail on it. And then I don't want to go being like, what is this? So it is so, it's easier and feels better to me to just be like, oh, I can't. I just cannot because I know I'll bail or I'll be bummed <laughs> to yeah. have to do it. And I don't want to do that. Nobody wants to bail or be bummed. No. <laughs> Two bad bees, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. No way, man. Um, there's something I want to talk to you about as far yeah. as when you're a unique product like you are, um, it's very difficult sometimes for for when you come to LA for people to know what the fuck you can do for and at any point. But when you don't necessarily fall into a zero box of like, okay, you're gonna you can be this arc this archetype or this yeah. character. It um can be difficult and i assume because i know that's something that i've dealt with from yeah. all of my career um that's something that you have to deal with and yeah. so i just want to talk to you a little bit about that because okay. i don't um you just tell me a little bit about the struggles you've had with that it is um yeah it's 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 a weird thing because it is i'll get um sides and stuff where it's like oh that's not me i don't know it's that's a good question, man. Um, well, a big thing we kind of talked about is, and this took me years to realize, is just being like, well, I'm going to do my thing. It will work for people or it won't. And when it works, it's awesome. And if it doesn't, it's like, that's fine. Maybe they'll then remember me for a thing where it might work more. You know, and I used to get really in my head um, and there's still moments where you'll get I'll get like sides for something. They're like, OK, just like a big, fat, slobby lady mm -hmm. who's just nasty. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait a second, what? And then and I would get it mad at that. But now I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm going to do my thing. Have fun. I'm going to try to have fun and just make it a fun performance for whoever's in the room. Kind of treat it like a show. And then he's like, well, I did my best. Um, I, and I want to move on. Um, I'm trying to think of like, because, yeah, I don't really, I guess like quirky best friend would be a, a pretty like, but even that I don't get. <laughs> so <laughs> I truly don't know what, I don't know what thing I would do. Um, I don't, how about you? Like, how do you feel? about thank you for asking yeah um it's just there were times where you have to like learn to lower your ego and certain things and just not and just like you said be like oh i'm gonna do my best and showcase what i can do yeah um also being a student of comedy i love so much comedy and i watch things back and i go like oh there's so many things that people um my you know my color or whatever I had to do that were way worse than anything that i've oh had to, to deal with yeah. and so i try to look at that or even with that i was watching a um episode of the golden girl spinoff with with um with my fiance and um it was a great episode it had like um chong from cheech and chong was in it no cheech yeah. cheech was in it yeah cheech is in it 
um don Cheadle was in it Whoa! and then um margaret cho was in this episode and she had to make this joke about how someone's talking about said something about a dog and she was like no we don't don't cook dog and it was just like that must have sucked for yeah. her to have to do yeah. that and, but she did it and she nailed it yeah and she you know moved on and did other things yeah. and so there's been times my, my main one was like the probably the first thing one of the first things i did when i moved out here and it's one of the things that people still talk to me about so i'm like oh i know i at least did a good job but um as a new girl and I was like this street singer. And when I did the audition, there was just this thing about like, oh, he's kind of like disheveled. Da, 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 da. And so like I had this little like just suit on what, yeah. what thing, but it's all like open and everything. Yeah. And then I get there and they're like, no, he's like homeless. You're shirtless. Da, 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 da. And it was just like and I had this moment where I was like, oh, man, like I've been doing stand up for at that point. 10 years yeah like, like i've been working on like i go to acting class uh, oh you know uh, not every week but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i go to acting class that's good, that's i go to class yes. and so it was just like oh man i work so hard at the thing and then but at the end of the day they're just like hey you're fat take off your shirt yeah and so but then there was probably like okay well i can succumb to that yeah or i can try to knock this out of the park and show my skills yeah and i tried to do that and at the on set i knew i was doing well because i was making everybody on set laugh yeah, everybody yeah. was breaking up and then when it came out like it's still a thing that people are like oh Whoa. that's where i saw you yeah. from that's the first time i saw you yeah and i was like who's that guy and yeah. i was like oh i so fucking i turned that thing that i could have beaten myself up about and yeah. turned into a big positive for yeah because still that's what you know that's that's a big ass show yeah so it in like grow this remind of like growing up i was always so into those like bit parts in tv and movies where it's like whoa they got one of the biggest laughs i want to do that mm -hmm. like i love that idea of just kind of being that person where it's like wait i saw you in this was it also in, the, you know, where it is that, like, they would pop up. I feel a lot in I Love Lucy. They would have, like, just these people pop up and be so good that you're like, I want, I love those just little character bit parts. And I didn't ever think of it of, like, oh, maybe that's kind of a part of the thing you and I are in. Mm-hmm. Oh, you were afraid to say it. <laughs> what is the thing you and I are? I don't know. Like a different box? I don't know. <laughs> that thing is that box. I yeah. think it's that box. Um, I, but that's one of the biggest compliments you can have in a career, right? Is that, yeah. and that's what I started to learn in general when because i used to get so caught up especially when i first had a show i would just be like i want this thing to go and i had to learn like okay things come and go yeah i just have to be good yeah and that's what matters yes. is playing for me and having having fun for me yeah and once you had that time it was like oh man it's just just fun. like i love it because then people are like oh man no matter what i see you in you're good yeah and i like it and yes. like, that's the best compliment you can and get. that's all we want because I, re I remember, like, first moving here. I don't know why I thought this, but I was like, oh, I'll never do multicam. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, like, did it for the first time. I was like, this is so much fun. I would, I love it. And then I've done a, a bunch since, but where it was like, why would I, where was that coming from? Mm -hmm. I had such, like, I loved doing it. And it is that thing where it's like, oh, I just get to have fun. Yeah, I think it's like a, fun. it's just a, it's, and it just comes in general from like when you don't know something. Yes. It's quick, easier for you to have a judgment on it and just be like, oh, they're cheesy and they're stupid. But then you start thinking, and I, me personally, I'm like, oh, all my favorite shows were multi -cam. So many of my favorite shows were multi -cam. Yeah. It's bonkers. And it's like, wait, and I get to be in front of an audience, which is what I love anyway. Yeah. And it's such a um, unique skill set that, like, a lot of just actors who are great actors yeah. don't have. Yeah. They don't know how to hold for a laugh. They don't know how to pause or, like, yeah. get the joke ready. Yeah. 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 It mm -hmm. is. I've had a, 
quite a few notes in audition rooms, though, that <laughs> I'm, I'm playing pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you laughing? You're laughing, though. Yeah, we are, but take it down a notch. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I'd rather be turning it. That was the thing, though, with me. Uh, I used to be very afraid, and uh, the note I would get was, have more fun with it. Really? And at one point, I was like, "These, mo- I have the most fun. <laughs> you don't tell I me to have- I am having so much fun right now. <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't. I was scared yeah. shitless. Yeah. So um, it was a thing. I'm still learning. It's still a oh, thing I do now where constantly. I'll work on an audition, and my fiance will be like, hey, she's like, why don't you just be you? Why are you putting on this thing on it? And I'm like- and I'll get mad at her. And I'll be like, yeah. what are you talking about? First of all, I'm just reading it. Relax. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> I'm not like ready yet to run it, run it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it is nerve wracking. Yeah. Because you are, you go in being like, especially seeing the description or, or whatever, just being like, well, they want blank. And I'm not 100% whatever it is they want. How much do I mold myself into becoming that or whatever? Mm-hmm. I and I still like I get nervous too. Like as I'm walking up to whatever building, I'm like, oh, oh what if I shit my pants? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of fun. I still I like those nerves to use that energy, but like Yeah. I feel better though. Like nothing's better than when I already am working on something. Cause <gasps> then you're like Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah. And, that and makes then you such know a it. It makes, it makes such a difference when you're like, I already have like some stuff lined up, so I don't give a shit. And people are like, whoa, your confidence. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like that desperate, I need to get this, which I've had quite a bit, destroys me. You can you can smell that off mm-hmm. of someone. Yeah, it's something we talk about here a lot, though. But that's like desperation is something that is unattractive in all forms. It's unattractive yeah. if in a in a mate. It's unattractive yeah. in a coworker. If someone came at you like that, saying that they needed money, yes, you're more likely to give it to someone who's like, "Hey, can I just borrow twenty real quick?" Yeah. Then someone come up and be like, I need twenty dollars, man. <laughs> I need I need a van. I need it. My tank is empty. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about it in that because that is so true. Where it's just like, whoa, just chill out. Yeah. We'll be fine. Like, um, oh yeah, that that is so huge. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's so tough. Like, and I remember hearing people like in rooms during pilot season and stuff being like, I just need to book this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, (laughs) I can't think like that or else I'll lose my mind. Yeah. No, there's been times like that um, for me, especially when like um, my son wasn't living with me at the time yet. And I was like, I need to get him. And when I have him, I need to have a place for him. So I need a, a, I need a gig. Yeah. And you could, yeah, you could see it in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. And um, I mean, I think that desperation at the time, I was able to use it to motivate me. It was definitely the thing of like, even now I could find myself like, oh man, I wish I had a little bit more of it just because I'm like, I, oh, I'm fine, I'm comfortable. I'll just play some Call of Duty. Let's fucking chill out. Like, you're fine. Who cares? But back then it was just like, no, you better go to class. You yeah. better go to thing because you need to book something. Yep. You know? Yes. And I just think there's a happy medium. There is. And I hope to find that someday. We will. It'll take a while. Yeah. And we'll go through waves where we've, because like when we do have something, there's that happy medium of like, oh, great. Like I'm still, I still want to work because I can't, like, yeah. We're going to make a show where we do 37 seasons. Okay. You and me. I would love that. Okay. I think we'd be great. I mean, we're already, um, 
we just have a great rapport. We do. And then we already found out from the movie that we're great on camera together. There we are. It's a good balance. It's people, a good balance. People like it. People want more of it. <laughs> Let's do it. 37 seasons, Netflix. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm open to network too so that we can get I residuals. Too. I and am then, too, yes. Then they sell it to Netflix and we get a boost. There we go. That's a good plan. Yeah, that was okay. a solid plan. Done. We got a solid plan. We have no idea for a show, but we have Mm-mm. a plan of our future. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm um, speaking of nice segue. What are some <gasps> of your goals right now? Um, personal, career wise, what, whatever you're open with sharing with us. Yeah, we love talking about goals here. Goals, okay. Um, a, a goal of mine right now, and has been for a while, is like I would love to um star in and like produce my own tv show you know where it's just like ooh, this is my style of comedy you know kind of just like my show mm-hmm. that would be just so much fun yeah just a fun kind of just goofy comedy with heart like I want to pretty much make a like kind of Tommy boy of television where it's like these really awesome, nice, real moments. But then the the funny is so funny. Uh, yeah, it sounds that's kind of a, a career goal right now. And a general one for career is just to always work. <laughs> All right, that's maybe more of a wish <laughs> than a goal. But um, yeah, how about you? my goals right now was thank you for asking again um but it's been thinking about them because it's my my vision board time we have usually around december a little bit close to new year's eve we have a vision board party okay. at my house and we invite people over and we do little collages and we make our things and yeah. then we have to tell people what our goals are for okay. the year um and so last year my goals were all about commitment i felt like i wanted to be more committed to my health i wanted to be committed in my relationship because i felt yeah. like i had not given a lot of relationships chances okay. i was quick to cut people off mm-hmm. and um i think i did good i mean i'm engaged you're so doing great good. and i'm doing um, in some of the best health of my life oh, except for if you, if you cut out this last week I love <laughs> thanksgiving nobody cares <laughs> <laughs> Um, I so what I've been thinking about recently, um, it's a little thank you, it's a little embarrassing to say out loud, oh. is that I feel like oh, some of these things, like um, my weight loss goals or um, things like you know I have issues with my hair and stuff as far as like being like oh I'm losing some of my hair and all that, but I think a lot of that has been me mentally placing it, reasons why. Like I shouldn't succeed in mm-hmm. front of me, mm-hmm. um, and so my b- biggest goal for this next year is to kind of just let admit to myself and really believe in myself that I'm enough and I'm great as I am, and yeah. I'm um, valuable and uh, hot and able to get a show or a movie or whatever exactly as I am, and I don't need to lose another pound. Yeah, I don't need to do anything, and I'm. Pr- valuable how i am yes. and i will continue to try to go meet goals with my personal yeah. needs but i feel some of it has been me placing these mental things of like oh i need to do this to be ready absolutely that's us kind of self-sabotaging ourselves of just because i get in my head where it's just like well it's because i'm i'm overweight or whatever and it's like no i'm enough you're enough. We see it all the time. Like, you're enough. You do it on stage all the time. You know? Like, yeah, you're enough. I'm enough. We're all enough. But it's tough. <laughs> our, our dumb minds are like, yeah, are you sure about that? Mm-hmm. Are you, you sure? You see other people and what's working or, or things oh. work and you're like, what do I, they have that I don't? Yeah. And then you're like, well, they're this or they're that and yeah. I need to do this. And um, I think it's similar to like, you know, covering your light to try to change. And I f- do feel like I needed to make health changes for sure. Yeah. Um, but 
I'm feel like I've done that. And anything yes. else now is like vanity, vanity. Yeah. And which is fine because I which like being totally vain. Fine. Yeah. Be vain. But I don't need to, again, just place these blocks in front of me. I'm fine. I'm great. I hosted my own game show, which made me so happy. Yeah. And and that was a big thing, similar to what you're talking about, as far as like, I've been working for years to try to get this show off the ground about my uh, son and I. And, yeah. Um, and just showing my, like you said, just my style of humor as well. And you get so much feedback or, or people telling you like oh this wasn't work or this thing or a lot of my stuff was like oh this is too dark people won't do and um doing the game show and and mostly like writing a lot of my own stuff for it and that and being like oh no like this works when i do my shit and i follow my instincts it works it fucking works and so i'm that's kind of my thing is like just fucking believe in it and do it and and don't worry about and um you know, a lot of it is out of our control. So it's like, hey, if you don't want to give me a show, that's fine. I'll figure out a way to get my style out. I'll get figure out a way of getting yeah. my 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 um comedy philosophy, I guess, or or my kung fu style out in whatever way I can. Yeah. But I know it's sound. I yes. know it's good. Yes. Cause you get to hear people laugh all the time where you're like this does work yeah this does work yeah 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 i'm doing all the i'm getting all the feedback i'm doing all the polling it's yeah. coming back great <laughs> yeah it's going great you guys people love koalas <laughs> they need more koalas yeah it's it's man our minds it's tough but it's important to just be like, oh, it's also very fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun game. It's a fun game we're playing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we feel like we're going to lose it, but then we pull out and we're like, okay, it's a good game. <laughs> it's a fun game. I can get behind it. <laughs> what it's no Mario do? 3. It's no Mario 3. Absolutely not. <laughs> if you could, what time would you warp to in your life with that whistle? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm going to answer because I think there are always answers. Like, I wouldn't warp. I love, I love my life, and I want to see the journey. Yeah, yeah, that's the right answer. But um, I really would like to see what I'm like at 50. Yeah, and where I probably really don't give a fuck about a lot of things. Yeah, and also I think I'd be a real fun older actor <laughs> i uh was thinking that too of like i want to see where i'm at when i'm like 80 and i hope to god i'm in a bunch of fun like movies and stuff did you see knives out not yet i want to there's a really this is not a spoiler at all there's a really funny old lady and the whole time i was like i want to be that lady <laughs> like or like um christmas vacation mm-hmm. um uh, uh, Aunt Bethany, mm-hmm. where she's like, "Is your house on fire, clock? I want to be that." Uh, the the lady who puts the meatballs in, in um in the wedding singer's hands. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a great. That's just classic. And so good. I like to see you enjoy. <laughs> yes. Just squeezing it. <laughs> like, take a bite. He's like, okay. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. We're gonna be fun old actors. Oh, for sure. Ooh. For sure. Saying all the nastiest stuff because that's always funny. Mm-hmm. Old people saying nasty stuff. Gonna be killed. Perfect right? comedy. And that's also the thing. Yeah, that's the fun part of also. Like, let's wait it out. We'll be here. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here. The yeah. world will be here. <laughs> it will. It will. So the last thing I um, want to ask you is just for a piece of advice for something maybe you just been thinking about, maybe something you've been reflecting on recently, something that you could think that would help my getting better community to get better. Oh. I know that's very vague. No, I like it. that. Yeah. Um. This is just kind of, and I think especially now holidays, but I always keep it in mind, but like of just pushing kindness, you know, of just like, I try to uh, say hello more. to, And I've, I've honestly, 
it was truly since like <laughs> Trump got elected. I was like, I'm going to push kindness so hard because right now so many people are set like bummed to where it is like not even going out of my way, but just making sure like, oh, I'm going to like smile at this person and say hi um, and just be f- friendly because that might help somebody. You know, like I know when I, if somebody like says hi to me and looks just very nice and friendly, I'm, whoa, you just kind of made my day. Like, that's so nice. You're a stranger. You don't have to do that. Um, I don't, yeah, pushing kindness and having fun. <laughs> do that. <laughs> I think that's a very simple, very beautiful answer. One Thank of the best you. we've ever gotten. What? Yeah. Ooh. Be kind, yeah. have fun. It it's like yeah. I don't I think it makes it and it, it makes a difference for me too. Like even if I'm feeling a little down or something, um, just like kind of breathing, be like, I'm gonna be I'm gonna just like talk to um, I don't know, this waiter just a little bit more than usual. Or like I'm gonna just be nice and it makes you feel better too. So just yeah. being a positive force in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me, it it makes, yeah, selfishly, it makes me feel better, too. Like, ah, oh, being positive is so much more fun than being sad and negative. Yeah. Even though it's, a, you should be, be sad. That's been a big thing I've been working on, too, is like, feel your feelings. You need to. Or else they bottle up and you get mad. At, and you don't handle it in a proper way. Yeah. You get mad at Mono for not taking the trash out in a weird way. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, sorry, I feel so many other things, but ah, uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> feel your feelings, too. That really does make a difference. It definitely does. Yeah. It just, um, no, you don't always have to chase happiness. You don't always yeah. have to be those things. You can, you can run the full gamut of emotions, and they're yeah. all valuable. And, um, as you get older, the more you understand that. You're like, oh, this is some fun and a good cry. Oh, I love a good cry. It, and I used to really be like very much like, no, I'm a positive person. I'm happy. So I'm not allowed to feel uh, uh, sad or frustrated or whatever. And then with the mm-hmm. help of therapy, it was very much like, no, you need to feel these things. Yeah. And have a good cry. Yeah. Because you feel so much better. You definitely do. And yeah. all those emotions, a- anger, I think is a big one um, for, for a lot of, I was going to say for men, but I was going to say equally for women. Because yeah. I think a lot of women have repressed anger that they don't deal with. Yeah. And you got to have a proper way to to um, honor those feelings. On, a lot of times anger is the agent for change. It's the thing that lets you know that there's something wrong and something you need to fucking ch- get out of yeah and and so you need to honor your anger and not um just let it build up and then oh. then just let it all out on someone who doesn't deserve it yeah. or even if it is someone that does deserve it because then you released it all and you have not made any change yeah. you just are going to let it build back up oh. and i mean a lot of the things we're talking about my my acting scene but a lot of the things i've been getting later lately have been about like hey you you have to be angry you have to be thinking because that's not something um i was always taught to deal with you know a lot yeah. of times when i saw it it was in very negative ways or um yeah my mom was in abusive relationships so every time i saw that it was very negative or um and so i learned a lot of it just keep it in and then it would come out in destructive in the ways weirdest ways yeah yeah and so now i've been learning um this thing that we've talked about before on this podcast is like, I like to call myself an energy mirror where I'm like, I'm, I I come at you and pretty much in neutral, mostly yeah. actually in positive. Yeah, but yeah. if you in turn come at me with negative, I'm not going to keep feeding you positive. Yeah. I'm going to give it back to you because yeah. I don't want to carry it. Yes. Yeah. Ex- yeah. And I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to get crazy. But if you're, if like, I have no problem telling another grown adult to go fuck themselves. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This week or I I saw knives out. Uh and um the couple in front of us, they were like kind of older and they were talking, but it wasn't bothering me. It was just kind of like a little whisper. 
Um, but then the woman in front of them turns around and she's like, will you shut up already? And then this lady in front of us was like, fuck you. And then the other lady in front, she was like, fuck you too. And then they both just watched the rest of the movie and it was just like, whoa, okay, we got it out. But it was so, it was so funny and strange of like, but I guess they got it out and it's game on. Yeah. And now they can enjoy the movie. (laughs) Yes. It was so wild. But it is like growing up and once again learning like, oh, their anger, their negativity is not because of me. It's coming from inside. Mm -hmm. And so it does make it a little bit easier to just be like, hey, man, fuck you for now. (laughs) Something's up. Yeah. Yeah. You figure yeah. it out. And then come back and be chill. Yeah, and then come back and be chill. And and hopefully um, they're figuring it out too. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to take it out on you or whatever. Yeah, a lot of people. I mean, that's what I saw in the Mr. Rogers movie. He oh, yeah. was angry because he had a lot of repressed feelings about his dad. And really? He, he just carried it all around. Mr. Not Rod- Mr. Rogers. Oh. No, the guy. Oh, yeah, Mr. There's Rogers. Another, there's another subject in the movie. I okay. don't want to ruin it. Okay. I just wholeheartedly recommend it because the, that was, uh, um, I'm going to talk about it in my other intro, but um watching that movie really made me again value the being silly and being kind <gasps> and being like there's such a value in it and yeah um because like just doesn't it doesn't go out of styles miss rogers never goes yeah. out of style miss rogers super classic because he it's a message that is just the easiest to get behind of being kind and being nice and being sweet to each other and i was like man I don't care if what people say, because it usually seems around election years, like my style that becomes a little less popular. People yeah. are always looking for like, oh, what's the sharpest take yes. on what's going wrong? Topical. And, let's yeah. go. Yeah. But I'm just like, I'm just going to keep doing what I want to do, which is about, I mean, my biggest influences are, are Lucille Ball and like oh. Carol Burnett and things like that, where it's I just about, them. yeah, there's a such a extra level of humor and kindness that you you know and it's fun to be sharp and sometimes it's fun to oh, be it's mean very i love fun. It. i love talking shit yeah i, I love screaming and getting angry but i don't find any fun being cruel you right know? and um so that's it yeah <laughs> let's just be nice be nice we are being nice yeah Cut to us beating the Knife shit out fight. of each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I really Thank enjoyed Thank you so the much for having me. I love you, man. I love you, too. This was great. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye. Woo.